what is going on guys welcome back to a brand new tactics video and today it's going to be the ultimate 442 as a tactic which is absolutely incredible in this game i'm a big fan of a 442 it's a little bit it can be deemed as a negative formation but i like to think i made this a little bit more of an elegant 442 but let's go ahead and get into the results if you do enjoy the tactics though please do leave a like subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications there's tons of more content coming up next week so be sure to watch that as well but let's go ahead and see how we've done with the first team which are actually predicted to finish 24th so that is right, a team that are predicted to finish 24th is going to be Chestnut, actually inside of the Vanarama National League South. And we have come out and actually won the division. Now, it's not an absolute convincing, dominating season. As you can see, 28 wins, 13 draws, and also 5 losses. But there's actually a lot of teams. I mean, there's a team here that drew 18 games. 18 games, 11, 13, 13, 13, um, in terms of draws, that is three teams in the season. We also won the FA Trophy against Barnet, scoring 78 goals and only conceding 30. And we are gonna, we're not gonna pay attention too much to this because we are gonna go over to the squad screen as well because I feel like that's a more of an accurate way of looking at it because we can see literally everyone. But overall, a very, very good first initial thought of how this tactic works. In terms of the data hub, we are gonna go and have a little look. We're looking at 1.7 goals per game, 0.65 conceded per game, and 84% pass completion. Now, when you see these stats compared to a powerhouse team, which we are gonna show, they look really, really low, but we are a team are predicted to finish 24th so we've got to take that into account At the end of the day it's not it's not a tactic that you're going to score five goals a game with if you're predicted 24th in quite a tough league anyway because there's a lot of decent sides in here that obviously want to work their way up through the english um, divisions and the fact we've come out and put on the display is really really impressive and it'll be interesting to see did we manage to actually dominate any of the stats that'll be the interesting one um, so yes, we did. We had most points per game, fewer shots against, best pass completion, most possession at 64%, something which I've actually got clicking really well in this 4-4-2 is the possession element. Most clean sheets and the fewest conceded. So what you want from a 4-4-2, defensively solid, an amount of goals which enough goals to win a game not decent as in three or four just enough to get you over the line that is a 4-4-2 not many shots at goal that's three great things going for us it's a decent bit of possession it's really all looking up for us so a fantastic season with chestnut going over to the squad screen i'm going to have 35 goals coming here it's going to be from temi 22 here from charles couple plays out on loan right now 14 8 8 it's not like ridiculous stat lines in terms of goals scored. Obviously, it is going to be Tammy. Tammy? Not Tammy. Temmy picking up a majority of the goals. And in terms of the assists, we're going to have 16, 16. He's obviously out on loan. 9, 8, 8, 7, 7, 6. And, you know, it's, it's a decent amount. We are seeing a lot of contributions from different players. But I don't feel like you really see how many goals you can get with this tactic until you use it with a semi-sort of decent team. But no disrespect to Chestnut, because at the end of the day, they got the job done. I still can't believe we actually managed to win it. But... Do you know what? We'll take it. What a season. Now, this is what happens when you use it with a slightly better team. Slightly better. PSG, obviously, over in the French League. Champions League winners against Man City. French League champions. French Cup champions. Trophy de Champion champions as well. 137 goals. Only 14 conceded. Only 29 yellow cards. Zero red cards. Kylian Mbappe, the star man, as to be expected. Neymar as well. Actually going invincible. 35 wins and three draws. The draws coming against... SC Nantes, that is going to be Lille and Nice. Very close games as they are, but an incredible season besides that going on. And in terms of the actual data hub, we are going to have a quick look. We're looking at 3.61 goals per game, which is getting on for double with what we obviously what we scored with Chestnut, which is to be expected. We have got Mbappe, Messi and Neymar, let's be realistic. Conceded per game at 0.37 and pass completion basically at 89%. So this 4-4-2 is actually a really good possession tactic as well, which is not something all 4-4-2s do. Um, I feel like a very misconception conception in the fm community is sometimes people see for example three videos on four two three ones but how different you can get them to play same with four four two same with any system i could upload a four four two which is counter attacking you have 40 percent possession but you hit on the counter this one is very possession orientated and it works really really well and in terms of actually some of the players this will be interesting to go over the stats yeah it's going to be dominance i mean most points per game most goals at 137 fewer shots against most shots for most possession at actually 66 percent was conceded and most clean sheets at 27 and in terms of the actual squad screen it's going to be nuts i know it is as you can see 75 goals here from mbappe 45 for messi neymar coming in with 37 um kambembe with eight seven for hakimi sanchez with five 
um, five for Marquinhos and Soler with four. So it is going to be a lot of the, the work being put on sort of the, um not the front three, but the three players you'd expect to be getting the goals. And obviously, I do believe Messi actually did play one of these sort of striker roles. So he obviously enjoyed it quite well. And in terms of the assists, we've got 32 from Neymar, 24 for Messi, 16 for Vatinha, Soler with 16, 15 for Verratti, Bappe with 13, 12 for Hakimi, Mendes with 6, and 6 for Burnout. So, do you know what? Still an incredible season. Lots of different players getting involved with the assists and the goals. Who got the best match rating? That is going to be, obviously, Kylian Mbappe, then Neymar, and then Messi. I don't think that really needs to be checked, did it? What a season. Now, we're going to watch the goals from the two cup finals that I played personally. And this is why I always say, do feel free to download all three variants of the tactic or copy them, because I do switch a lot when I actually play. And if you guys do want to see me play them live, do let me know as well. As it is going to be Messi. Obviously, this is, we obviously scored one goal from a set piece. Messi plays through with Kylian Mbappe. And I'm not being funny, but if there's one man you don't want running at you, that is going to be Kylian Mbappe. Because there is no chance for the Lorient goalkeeper. As we do actually tuck away what is going to be the second goal. We go again here with Neymar down the line. Just absolutely acres of space. He actually cuts it back here. Gets it across into Messi. And it's a bit of a scrappy one. It actually goes down as an own goal, I believe, from Talibi. Um, or Talbi, should I say, sorry. So overall, so far, so good in this cup final. I didn't really have any worries against, you know, against the Lorient. No disrespect, but we are PSG. A great ball over the top there, showing the more direct side of this tactic as well. Obviously, we're not all about possession and short play. 4-4-2, sometimes you do have to get the ball over the top and get the job done. And that is what we do again on this occasion. Down the line to Hakimi, cuts it back into Messi. What a finish that is. It might look easy, but first time in the air. Absolute sensational player. I believe they do get a goal, though. They do get a goal here. Um, So it is actually... Um, what I'm not happy here is, I mean, Marquinhos just slows down ridiculously. And a shock and defend him. To be fair, it's more of a personal error than an actual tactical error. That is really not good. That is really not good defending. Um, pure communication from the back. Neymar driven into the box, into Danilo. How about that on the turn? A great finish on the turn to put this what was going to be 6-1 up. And one more goal to come. Marquinhos into Danilo. Back into Marquinhos, into Soler. Is this going to be one of his goals of the season? He drives it into the box, into Lionel Messi, who pucks at home. It was a very comfortable 7-1 final, um, which is always interesting. But we absolutely dominated all the stat lines, as you can imagine. XG, shots on target, shots overall, and possession. You can't really query it. I don't usually stick up for Man City, but this was a very unfair 3-0 final. Because when you see the stats at the end, it's very even in terms of the actual stat lines, in my opinion. But a more direct ball gets played over the top there. As Mbappe goes down the line, back into Neymar. Is he going to hit it himself? He actually drives it across into Messi. Who finds... I mean, who is that? Ake, that is shocking from him. Messi obviously finds a little bit of space in between him. As he build up again here, out wide into the central area. Back into Fabian. Ball into Messi. Now that is build up play. Now, that's a different side of the tactic. That is a possession element. Um, So you do... It's good to see, though, because we're getting to see a nice mixture of what you can expect to see, how the goals actually get created, how they get put in the back of the net. So again, a very good build-up play from the back into the midfield. And in my opinion, Edison has to do better. It's coming at him quite slowly, but Mbappe's not going to complain. 3-0 in the final. But you can see by the stats, they deserved a goal at least. They had more shots on target than us, for God's sake. Um, the XG was in our favour somehow. We had slightly more possession, but that was a very harsh final in Man City. I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor on the video, Factor 75. Factor 75 provide freshly ready-made meals directly to your doorstep. The chef-created meals are always fresh and never frozen, designed by dietitians to ensure every meal is packed with premium nutritional value. Factor's menus update weekly and include over 27 meals and 34 add-on options every single week. As someone who is trying to eat healthier and cut out order and takeouts, this is the perfect replacement as you eat right with zero effort. The great thing about Factor for me personally is it takes all the stress and time that it takes to prepare meals and cook them, and you can have a chef quality meal all inside of roughly two minutes, which is still insane to me. It really is. And lastly, please do use the link in the description or go to go.factor75.com and use code FACTOR. SE35598 for 50% off your first box. The graphic is also on the screen. And the last team we tested with is going to be Liverpool. And I wanted to test them with Liverpool because I feel a bit sorry for them. They're not having a great season at the moment. They're not in the best place. And I feel like we turned it around a little bit. I would have been, it would have been a lot nicer to do a bit better in the Champions League. 
We did win the Premier League and also the Community Shield against Man City, making it a double winning season with 93 goals being scored and only 19 conceded. The Premier League was reasonably tight, only a six point um, sort of difference. Arsenal having a shocking season, finishing in ninth place. Our Man City obviously having a great season, Chelsea and Manchester United enjoying great football as well. But in terms of the actual data hub as well, let's go and have a little look. 2.45 goals per game, conceded at 0.5 and pass completion of 88.7. Now, what I will say is, this tactic is obviously a 4-4-2. Not every team suits it. So, for example, um, you might you might not have two strikers up top. In that case, that is not a tactic for you. But if you have got a system which can play this, you've got two great strikers, you will thrive with it. And that is why I believe it's almost sometimes it's good to get a tactic you want and sign players around it. Because if there's a tactic that you've got in your head that you really want to try, get players around that tactic and build your dream team. That would be my bit of advice anyway, um, because sometimes you can't just simply load in a tactic to a group of players and expect them to fit it, because it might not happen. It's one of them ones. Um, but anyway, a very good stat line there. In terms of the actual league stats, we are going to go ahead and have a little look. Um, league stats, here we go. Most points per game, most goals, most shots for at 745. Fewest shots against, most possession in the Premier League. Very good to see at 63%. US conceded and also the most clean sheets. In terms of the actual squad, we are going to go ahead and have a little look. You can see Starman Mo Salah is going to be right at the top. He absolutely loves it. He absolutely loves it. We're going to be seeing 46 goals, 20 assists. Nunes with 24 and 7. Van Dyke with 12 goals, I imagine, from set pieces. Um, Firmino, 11 goals and also 3 assists. Trent, 9 goals and 23 assists. Now, for example, Trent, this entire season, played on the right wing because Fabinho played right back. The assistant manager favoured him there. And he actually played quite, quite well. So that could be a fun little experiment to have um, to sort of try. See what you can get with Trent as a winger. Um, Diego Jota, 8 goals and also 5 assists. Um, Cody Gakbo, 7 goals, 16 assists. And it goes on, it goes on, you know. Everyone contributed a fair bit. Who's this down here? Robertson, there you go. 7 assists from him. So this is very good to see because there's a lot of people getting involved. Obviously, it is always going to have one star player. You're going to have, you know, your Haaland's, your Mbappe's, your Salah's, the people that always stand out. But what is good to see is we have got a nice mixture of people getting involved. As you probably figured if you watch this channel a lot, that is one thing I love to see. I hate it when I'm relying purely on one player. So like if this guy wasn't scoring 24, then a couple of 12s, and they were like 10s and 7s, I wouldn't be very happy. But overall... I'm impressed how this tactic plays because it's not designed to be the most attacking tactic. So that's why you're not going to be getting, you know, four or five goals consistently, whatever team you are. It is obviously 4 4 2. It's, it's as basic as it gets, but sometimes it's, it's good to play like it because it's really controlled. You can control the game, you can dictate the pace of it, and it's a really good tactic. And we are now going to break down the tactic, boys. But if you are enjoying today's video, please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. And also, let's try and hit 10k by the end of the year. We're trying to hit it. You guys are absolutely smashing it. There's going to be tons of content coming out, including tactics, rebuilds, and experiments. So also drop some comments below right now on any ideas you have. But let's talk tactics and break down all three of the variants. So this is going to be the ultimate 442. Now you can download all three files if you're a Twitch subscriber or a Patreon member. I want to quickly thank all the names floating down the screen right now that are current or new Patreon members. You can sign up for only £2 a month and you get access to all three of the files, early video release and much more. But you don't have to pay. I'm not one of them people. You can wait around and obviously copy it click for click, which is completely fine. And to do that, all you need to do is obviously copy the tactic that you've got to download, which is going to be this one, and then make the changes yourself. But let's go ahead and talk tactics. So the Ultimate 442. Now, when you start off with a 442, in my opinion, you have to go on attacking. Positive, you get a load of very annoying draws. And sometimes you end up losing a game because you just haven't got enough going forward, in my opinion. So attacking mentality in possession, we've got fairly narrow selected. Pass into space isn't really something we need because you saw from the highlights, we go direct as it is anyway. So I feel like that would have been a little bit overkill. Play out of defense, march short to pass and directness, which is a key thing to this because you might be wondering, well, hang on, why are you still going long? And to be honest, that comes down to some of the player roles, how they, they play the balls over the top and things like that. And we naturally had more of a direct approach anyway. So in my opinion, that, that was why it wasn't needed. And this is also a big reason why we've got so much possession. The much shorter really does help with that, as you can imagine. A slightly higher tempo because we're not going to try and be stagnant. We don't want to you know, switch off. We've gone a little bit about it. So 4 can be a really dull formation. So you have to spice it up in some areas. Um, low crosses in the final third, work ball into the box and dribble less. In transition, we've got counter press, counter, distribute to the centre backs and the full backs. With, um, short goal kick, sorry, I nearly started there, but luckily didn't. And out of possession, we've got a standard defensive line, a high press line of engagement, 
much more often with prevent short goalkeeper distribution and that works really well now if you want to go mad defensive you can always have a lower line but just be aware the more defensive you go the more chance you've got to, you know draw on them a very annoying games etc etc going over to the player roles then very nice mixture to be honest we're going to kick things off with a sweeper keeper on support no no instructions nice and simple nice and simple sweeper keeper support fullback on the right on support run wise get further forwards and sit narrower because you are going to notice that on the left hand side as well these wide players are obviously going to be staying out wide if you've got a fullback to stay out wide as well you're going to have two players running literally like that whereas when one of them sit in narrower if they do go forward you're going to have sort of one going here one going here and they can sort of link up really well it's pretty it's common sense but i do like to explain it just in case people wonder why they're sort of laid out like that a ball playing defender on the right on defend nice and simple on the left exactly the same and on the left hand side a fullback on support run wide get further forwards and sit narrower going over to the block of four in the midfield a winger on attack default instructions a winger on the right default instructions because they do everything that i want them to do without telling them to do more they literally just creative wingers to basically feed two up top to be real that's all their job is i'm um, going over to the midfield we've got a deep line playmaker on tackle harder support a Roman playmaker on support on default instructions. A complete forward on attack on shoot less often because this guy's more of a, a hold up player than non selfish player. I opted for a center forward over a deep line forward because, in my opinion, it worked a lot better in this system. I did test it previously with a deep line forward and a complete forward got a lot more better results, in my opinion. So definitely have one of them in and to partner an advanced forward on moving to channels. This guy here essentially will feed the advanced forward. He'll wait for the overlap and run from the fullback from the winger etc etc so this is more of a supportive role um and this one's obviously more of the goal scoring role but overall a very 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 good it's just a nice bunch of player roles it's not too not too exotic but it gets the job done and there's enough sort of attacking element in this 4-4-2 for you not to be dry and you know not score any goals a season and you're also not over committing as well but what we're going to do now is we are going to talk about the attacking variant of the tactic which obviously is designed for if you're chasing the game or if you want to go into a game attacking against a small team if you need goal difference for a league or something then this is the one you want to use so let's go ahead bang here we go so as you can see you're actually going to see a few changes we actually offer two advanced swords because we are going to go a little bit more sort of you know all guns blazing we have a mezzala on attack replaces obviously what's going to be the roman playmaker the deep line playmaker stays at the same the mezzala is told to dribble more get further forward you know really get involved in the game and the advanced forward is also going to be told to shoot less often because i don't want them both just pinging shots of the goal 24 7 so having one of them shoot less often makes them a little bit more composed but it's just a little bit more further up the field attacker mentality because very attacking i would switch to this if you are literally begging for a goal like five to ten minutes left you need one do, do switch to that but i'm not going to have it set to it because if you go into a game very attacking you're probably going to get punished in possession, we've got the run at defense, be more expressive. Um, the higher tempo gets completely revved up now to the max. Play out of defense as well. We've maintained the shorter pass on directness as well. In transition, we've got counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute anywhere across the back line with short goal kicks. And we've also opted for the higher defensive line, something which I said was very vulnerable at the start of the video. And I believe it is with a 4 4 2 to go into games with it. But at the end of the day, if you're chasing a game, you can have this higher line on. Or if you're playing a weaker team, you'd get away with it because you're going to outscore them anyway. So in my opinion, the higher line is, is definitely feasible in this situation. Little, little sort of memory refresher, the default one. We're now going to talk defensive. And this is where you see the 4 4 2 take a dark turn. This is the this is the sort of negative 442. This is the defensive variant. And this is the one you use if you're sealing out a game 10, 20 minutes left. I would not recommend going into games like this because it, it's not really designed to score goals at all. It's designed to be very annoying to play against. So the wingers drop to supportive roles, as you can see, and um, they're going to be on the default instructions, apart from the left one, because I did want one of them having something going forward and you'll see why i will explain that we have a ball winning midfielder on the default instructions and also a deep line forward on shoot less often just so we've got another hold up player um and also the reason why it's a deep line forward on this occasion is because i traditionally if i had a save going i would have a tall player to bring on in this position to basically win the knockdowns flicker on you could arguably use a target forward as well but i opted for a deep line forward in this scenario Positive mentality, so we drop from attack into positive. Balance, you're just going to be sat off way too much. In possession, this is where things look a lot different. So the reason why we've got one winger still on sort of get further forwards is that we do actually opt to hit early crosses. As you can see, we're passing into space. We're still playing out from the back, but this is what we've done differently. So 
we're going slightly more direct because we've got to spend a lot of the time with the ball in our half, probably near our goal line. So when we do intercept a back, we want to go long instantly. We want to break quickly. None of this short pass and nonsense. We need to get the ball up the field and try and get a goal. Because this, this, I mean, this variant of the tactic is designed to soak up pressure and hit on the break. And, you know, one of them situations where you might be winning 1-0, they, they literally throw everything at it and you get a lucky counter-attack. 2-0, the game's done. It's one of them sort of styles. Slightly higher tempo in transition. We've got to slow the pace down. Distribute quickly. I'm uh, not distribute quickly. Distribute to the centre back, sorry, and distribute to the full backs with counter, counter press, and take short goal kicks. And then out of possession, we've got the standard line. Now, if you really want to shut up shop, I am talking last five minutes. I'm, I'm not even going to go ten minutes because this is really negative. But you could go with a lower line and also drop off more if you wanted to do that. But it's going to invite a lot of pressure on your goalkeeper. They are going to be able to take long shots. But if you really are getting really feeling the pressure you could opt for that and obviously time wasting you do as your own accord if you wish to time waste you can do it and to be honest in this system why not it's designed for it so in my opinion if you are seeing out a game whack up the time wasting as well why not but that is going to be three variants broken down obviously we do do the system with this one apart from the finals where i do switch to these two dependent i never actually um use this in an actual game which i played but i did simulate sorry i did simulate it with like three or four of the games which is going to be with the first season we've done. And they were sort of 1-0 wins. They weren't high scoring, as you can expect, but it did get the job done. But that is going to be the ultimate 442 broken down, guys. If you have enjoyed, please do hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. Please do leave a comment on video ideas that you wish to see. We've got a big tactic list, but obviously now we are doing experiments and rebuilds. So more suggestions can come my way. But I'll see you boys in the next video. Have a great weekend.